Roy, I've talked to philosophers, neuroscientists about free will, um, but there are common understandings of free will that sometimes are very different, uh, sometimes there are elements of similarity. But as a, a social psychologist who really looks to human behaviors, uh, what can we begin to say about what people believe about free will and what are the consequences? Um, in order to get at what, how people understand free will, uh, we did an experiment where we had people write about an experience from your own life where you felt your actions reflected your own free will, mm. and other people wrote one where it was not of their own free will. Uh, and then we had people who were blind to condition, uh, you know, other judges go through and code those for differences. Uh, people, uh, the free will stories differed from the others in ways that, you know, that we, we infer that that's what tells us uh, what people believe about free will. Uh, they associate free will uh, with pursuing long-term goals. No difference on short-term goals. I mean, you can respond to the situation with or without free will, uh, but pursuing things across time. Uh, that's uh, an aspect of free will, uh, getting things what you want, acting consistently with your moral values, that's an important uh, component of people's understanding of free will, doing what's uh, better uh, for your group, um, thinking consciously, uh, deciding uh, what to do. Uh, so these are a lot of key features that people tend to associate uh, with the idea of free will in, in, in the ordinary mind, and, and you know, philosophers may say they're, they're wrong in, in some uh, respects. Uh, but uh, in but you know there's a real social phenomenon that matters in terms of free will. It's relevant to issues of are, should people be blamed? Can they be praised for their behavior? Should we be grateful? I mean, if the person couldn't help it, uh, there's not that much need to be grateful. You're grateful when I know that person didn't have to do that and right. they did something nice for right, me. Right, right. Uh, so free will is socially powerful. So uh, I think those are the key features. Uh, in uh, or many of the key features in, in terms of what people understand as free will. Okay, so that's from an internal point of view. So if you look at free will um, in, in, uh, on a social phenomenon, there are two, two aspects of it. One is how it affects my own behavior in myself, not relating to other people. And secondly, the implications for society. I think it's easier for society because there are obviously moral judgments that we have to make and hold people accountable to to, to run society. So we have our definitions. But how, how does it affect your people's own personal sense, or does it at all? Well, as a social psychologist, I tend to think that uh, many of these things really are only important and meaningful uh, in, in social groups. I, I kind of wonder if you lived alone on a deserted island and never encountered another human being, why would you care about free will? Why would the issue even occur to you? Uh, but in groups, we have to make moral decisions. Can we trust this person? Will this person who did something bad do it again? Can the person change uh, and do something differently? Uh, legally, uh, crimes that are a heat, heat of passion are punished less severely. Well, uh, if, if you think there's no free will and everything is caused, well, they're no different from any other, uh, uh, any other crime. So uh, socially, these things are tremendously important. No, that's very clear. And so the question is, on an individual basis, oh, okay. in terms of your own um, self uh, be behaviors as you monitor yourself, if you feel different definitions of free will, will it affect your own behaviors? We found in one study, most of the things we've studied tend to uh, have some interpersonal aspect. But uh, in one, we asked people, well, first we manipulated their belief in free will to try to bolster it or try to uh, undermine it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we said, well, think about a case sometime when you hurt somebody uh, and list the things you could have done differently. Well, the people who were believing in free will, they listed a lot of different things. The people who didn't believe in free will, substantially fewer and statistically significant. Uh, so belief in free will makes you more attuned to alternatives, more likely to think through, and this is something in the past, mm. but it's an important way by which we become better people. We reflect on things we've done wrong, and we say, well, I could have done this and it would have produced a better result. In this case, uh, with the study, uh, if I had done this, maybe I wouldn't have hurt that person. And so uh, believing in free will seems at least to motivate people uh, to, to, to think uh, through their actions and come up with ways and to improve in the future. We find People who believe more in free will learn more lessons from uh, their behavior uh, in terms of you know, the, like the moral lesson. And then when other people read those lessons, those are better lessons than the people who don't believe in free will. Uh, we find uh, uh, people are more helpful to each other when they believe in free will. They're less aggressive. Uh, we find uh, 
They're more prone to think for themselves and make up their own mind and decide what to do, more moral in a variety of ways. So uh, the belief in free will has substantial social consequences. So if uh, people read in popular press that free will is an illusion because certain neuroscientists are saying this or that about the brain, it's not just a, a, a trivial pursuit, but rather uh, it could affect uh, how people actually behave uh, towards their fellows. Uh, yes, certainly in the laboratory uh, there's ample evidence that uh, undermining people's belief in free will makes them lie, cheat, steal, aggress, do all sorts of other... Uh... How easy is it to manipulate people's own sense of whether or not they have free will? Well, when you're manipulating people's attitudes, it's hard to take people from one extreme to another. You know, if they're really invested in it or they've thought through. But uh, what we need for a scientific study is to get two groups that differ. Mm -hmm. And so you get one group to sort of reflect on uh, free will or you have them read an article supposedly that scientists have proved that there is versus is not free will or, or whatever and then you move people it's it's on a continuum and people move one way or another so uh, you can certainly move people to some degree most people don't have perfectly settled ideas about uh, uh, such issues as, mm. as, as free will. Uh, so uh, they're more malleable on that than on other things. And how, how clear are the results in terms of the impact, whether you believe or you don't believe you have free will, in terms of what you would, you would do vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the group? I mean, is, there, is the data robust? Multiple studies in different laboratories have now established that changing people's beliefs in free will, even to a relatively small degree, produces reliable changes in behavior. Uh, so, uh, yes, this is a, a finding that continues to be verified. So how do you see the implications of that? Well, um, some people believe quite sincerely that uh, brain science has disproved uh, that there's any free will, and so they feel at liberty to say that. Others of us say, your, your findings do not say that at all. Uh, that you may have refuted some bizarre definition of free will, but uh, not the free will that uh, matters to people in everyday life. And so, in that sense, it is irresponsible to overclaim, to overstate your results, to say that scientists know there's no free will, uh, because that will have a negative effect on society. Now, in my view, if, they, if science were to prove there's no free will, then it would be our duty uh, to say so. Uh, because uh, our duty in scientists is to tell the truth. But given that uh, our data are nowhere near saying anything like that, uh, then it is uh, irresponsible to, to act as if it does. And people who use their scientific prestige to essentially take personal opinions and spread them to other people, I, I, I have to object to that.